Hey everybody, this is Coach DiBernardo. I just want to give you a quick video on preseason and how important it is to build that team culture, get those shared values, and have everybody understand that they need to take responsibility for themselves during this really crucial time of preseason. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you some, some random things about preseason that I think every player needs to know. So first, first thing is... Whenever you're in preseason, and this goes for the whole season as well, whatever you say, in fr it, whatever you say, make sure you could say it in front of the whole team. So if you're not comfortable saying something that can't be said in front of the entire team, the, the entire coaching staff, then you probably shouldn't be saying it. So these little side gossip groups or anything where you're going and you're talking a little bit about this guy, that guy, don't do it. Stay out of that conversation, no side gossip, either you say it in front of the whole team and you're comfortable doing that or you're not. Next, it's a team sport. If you're there with a group, whether it's football, whether it's soccer, whether it's rugby, whatever it is, it is not what can you do to start, it's what can you do to improve and help the team. It's not about every other practice coach why am i not starting why am i not starting i'd rather hear what can you do to improve and how can you help the team that's what this is about and nobody wants to be asked every single day how did i do how how you know am i close to starting today the coach probably doesn't want to hear that every day once a week with feedback sure but every day probably not from a, from a player perspective, be prepared. So be on time, be early. I'd rather you be early. If it's me, I'm going to pack my cleats. I'm going to pack two pairs of cleats. I'm going to pack chin guards. I'm going to pack water. I'm going to make sure my laundry's done. I'm going to be at the bus early. Whatever that means, I'm, if I have athletic training, if I have treatment to do, if I have a little injury, I'm going to take care of it. Nobody should tell you what you have to do. You have to take responsibility for yourself. You have to be proactive. There, it is not the coach's responsibility. They shouldn't even have to take attendance. They shouldn't have to remind you about attending class. They shouldn't have to remind you about getting treatment, about not being prepared. Hey, coach, I only brought one cleat today. I don't have any shin guards today. That is your responsibility. Take care of your responsibility. Now, in preseason especially, there's a lot of things going on. When you are not practicing, obviously you need to take care of your business and be, be ready for the next practice, but you need to rest. So take your downtime seriously, and that includes hydration, that includes nutrition. Just because you're off doesn't mean you should be going on trips and hanging out all over the place. It, your rest time is a time to hang out with your team, but it's a time to rest because you need it physically and you need it mentally. Be responsible in all your relationships. Always form healthy relationships. If there's roommates who are not doing the right thing, the coach needs to be made aware because nobody has the right to put their teammates or anybody else at risk because they're not going to do the right thing. This is really, really critical for success is this. If you are not forming healthy relationships, if you are not taking care of things in your life, if you're not living your life in a positive, healthy way, there's no way that you could come onto the practice field, to the game field, and perform at your best. Impossible, because you're going to have these other distractions in your life, and you need to get rid of those other distractions. You want to have your life so it's lived in a positive, healthy way, so all you have to do is concentrate on what you need to do on the field. And that being said, it's one training session at a time. It's one game at a time. The only thing that you can control is the moment in front of you. So every training session is vitally important. Concentrate on that one thing at a time. And I know that everybody wants to start. Coach, I want to start. I want to start. And you start to see some long faces if guys aren't starting. And so just know this. If you work hard and take advantage of every moment, your opportunity will come. If your opportunity comes two weeks from now, two months from now, two years from now, it doesn't matter. Take your opportunity, train hard, 
and be ready for that opportunity. Now, come into preseason extremely fit. That's your job. You have to do your job, and you have to take responsibility. There's certain core values that we have, especially, I'll, I'll give you an example, work ethic and being fit. If you come into training camp not fit, it's completely disrespectful to the rest of the guys, to the rest of the team. We're here to try to win games and fulfill our potential. You cannot do that if players don't come in fit. It's different if they're coming off an injury and so forth, but come in fit. We have to define what the group's goals are. Like, what are your core values? Sportsmanship is one of them for me. Humility is another. A great work ethic is another. Basic human respect. You don't have to love your teammates. You don't even have to be friends with them sometimes. But you have to respect them. You need to show grit. And what is grit? Grit is perseverance. It is if you fail, then do you have the grit to keep trying and keep coming back? Those things all successful groups have. The other thing, this is always a pet peeve of mine. Make sure that you pitch in. So if the training field is filled with cones and goals or whatever it is, Help with the equipment. It is no longer, hey, freshman, pick this up. There's no such thing. If you're the best player on the team, you should be collecting the most equipment. Don't walk over to the bench and not collect equipment. It's a team sport. It's not an eye sport. It's very, very important that every play, everybody pitches in. Because whether you score every goal on our team or whether you never play one minute, the message is you're just important to the team as a person than anybody else on that team. And it's your job, everybody's job, to pitch in together. Now, the reality is we have to be passionate about what we do. If you're going to be really good and you come to practice and you're just average, you have an average attitude, you're not really prepared, but that's what you're going to get on the field. Over the long term, I'm talking long term. It might not show up in the next game, the next month, the next two. Passion drives a relentless work ethic, you have to come with passion. If you're not passionate, there's no way you're going to get to the level you want to get to over time. The next thing, tolerance, acceptance, confrontation. Listen, you're living with people. If you're in a college setting, you're living with people that you don't know. They're from different cultures, from different backgrounds. You need to have tolerance, you need to have acceptance. You need to attempt to understand where other people are coming from, even if it clashes with your culture. Now, every single group, and I don't care what group we talk about, has confrontation. Confrontation does not have to be a bad thing. And when I say confrontation is we have a disagreement. So if we have disagreements, how do we handle that? And it's going to happen. People are going to disagree People are going to have confrontations. And the reality is, if you handle it in a mature and a smart way, and you attempt to understand both sides, and you keep an open mind, and you have open dialogue, the team is going to grow stronger because of it. Trust me on that. Don't be afraid of, hey, the team's not getting along so great. Talk about it, open up the communication channels, and in the long run, the team's going to be more bonded and stronger because of it. Next, make sure that you're competitive. This goes with passion. If you're passionate, you're competitive. You want to compete every day, but in a positive way. And I'll give you an example of, let's say, goalkeepers, right? There's only one spot that we're going to start at goalkeeper. You might have four goalkeepers. They need to push each other. They need to compete against each other. Those guys are rivals because they're trying to be they're trying to get that starting position but at the same time they're teammates. So whoever's the starting goalkeeper, the other goalkeepers need to root for him, they need to encourage him or her and but knowing if you don't perform, the next person is up. That's healthy competition. That is competitive spirit and that's what we want. We don't want to have that side gossip and to root against your teammate and to no. You want to do so well and be so passionate and so competitive that you're going to take that person's spot without, anim without any animosity towards that person. Next is huge effort and attitude. You control both of those things. 
I, I don't give me anything passive aggressive. You call the team in, you want to have a little huddle, you want to talk to them, and you have one guy that's seven yards away and is half turned, no eye contact, and just kind of like, eh, I'm not really into it. That for me is passive aggressive. You need to buy in or you need to get out. And if you're not starting, every, listen, everybody's happy when they come in. Hey, everybody's got a chance. We all think we're going to start all this. Or, and then what happens is we name 11 players that are going to start, and now you start to see the sad faces, the passive-aggressive turning in, whatever it is, the attitude. That can't happen. That's your responsibility. Take responsibility to compete for your job and training, and you know what? Your opportunity will come, but you have to compete. But that sad face takes away from the group, it takes away from energy, it takes away from enthusiasm. There is no place for that. There is a place for a conversation with the coach. Hey coach, listen, I trained hard for the last month. I really excited about an opportunity because I think I can help the team and I think I think, you know, I I would really looking forward to an opportunity to prove it. And at that point, that's a good conversation to have, not in front of the team, just with the coach. Not every day, not once a week, maybe once a month. And let's take it from there. So for me, very, very important. Um, The last thing I'm going to tell you is nobody should have to oversee you. If you go on away trips, you don't need a list of 25 rules. Curfew is at 930. You need to have your door locked. You You need to be mature enough to be on time, to not be out at night to not do anything to jeopardize your team, your roommates, the program. Everything is based on a mutual respect for each other's dedication, each other's passion, and and in the biggest sense, a mutual respect for the program in general and the sacrifices that everybody has made to create this program. Now, that should be the overlying theme that garners everybody to take responsibility, and to behave in an appropriate way. So it's for the greater good. If you are constantly not on time, if you break rules, and when I say break rules, if you do things that you know are not healthy for yourself, for your teammates, for the team, at that point, for me, nothing's personal, but maybe you are not ready to be part of the team. And we'll have that conversation. I try to stay away from micromanaging people because even in today's society you need to be able to manage yourself look how many people are working from home nowadays those people those employees if they do a great job and get their job done they can stay working from home i'm sure but you have to take responsibility for yourself and do your job this is why as a coach I am not in favor of micromanaging you with a thousand different rules and always looking over your shoulder. I shouldn't even have to have a team study hall. You can get extra help anytime you want, but it's not my job to make sure you have a study hall because that's the way it's always been. I want people to take responsibility for themselves. After you're 18 years old, you really, you're you're a young man, you're a young woman, you need to start to take responsibility for all your actions, your study habits. I'm not saying that a study hall is a bad thing. If you want to go to study hall, that's a good thing. But if you really need a study hall for you to succeed because there's no way that you're ever going to pass your classes, I'm telling you the study hall is not going to help you anyways. It's not because you're probably going to sit in that study hall and not do your work anyways. We want people who want to be here and committed to success. If they need help, we will get them all the resources they possibly need. But keep in mind, in order to use those resources, they have to be self-motivated. You can't sit in a chair. You can't go to a soccer field. You can't do anything and expect to get anything out of it if you don't put into it yourself. This is on you. The responsibility rests on you. So I hope everybody has a great preseason. Be positive. Make sure every word out of your mouth is positive. Remember, the best player on the field is not the player who has the most skill. It's the player who understands how to make everybody around them better. 
and 99.9% .9 of that ability is here. It is about encouraging them, creating energy, creating enthusiasm, getting all the negative stuff out of everybody's head. You be that beacon of light. You be that guy. You be that girl who everybody says, I want to play on their team because they lift me up, because they make me a better player, they make me a better person, and I enjoy being around them. There is no negativity. So have a great preseason. Take responsibility for your actions. Get the job done.